Hey guys, Market Tough Touring. I haven't had a haircut for that long. I better wear a hat, look like a hippie. Anyway, I'm here to show you the um, Bushwhacker Meg, uh, fitted with Tough Touring brackets on a 13 foot uh, Oztrack Tanami uh, hybrid camper. Really happy with this one. This one was all uh, installed by Isolated Industries, who are up the back at Tough Touring. They do installs and all kinds of fabrication. Uh, really nice job. Um, so firstly, bracket set. Um, that's our triangulation bracket up there, which gives this awning fit up incredible stability um, and stiffness, followed up by a hook bracket on the other side, which holds the end. I don't know if you can see that there, okay. There's a hook bracket holding the end of the awning. Must be some kind of air show on it or something. There's millions of planes flying over today. Um, but the Meg, uh, polyester fabric, aluminium arms, very light for its size, probably about 40 kilos, but it is enormous, as you can sort of see. And the coverage, um, as far as these, uh, these vans go, you've got excellent coverage over your fridge, slide or your kitchen at the front, plenty there. Um, plenty around the back as well, like plenty. It's an enormous awning. So the triangulation brackets we build again, they're also at the back uh, and the hook bracket there. So the whole thing swings around and clips onto the hooks. So there's no poles and there's, I mean, even poleless. It has got poles on it, but the stiffness there is fantastic. The strength is excellent. Um, now, a couple of little things about the install that, that um, James from Isolated Industries has pointed out. He actually quite liked um, the existing standard uh, mounts that were here. They don't provide any anti-flex at all. In fact, they'd be no good to mount the awning to directly, but they do provide quite good shear strength. So this way, as well as good holding strength for holding the awning when you're dri driving over bumps and stuff. So he's left them on. There's four of them on there. Um, now anti-shear this, this way, front and back, um, is very handy if you do bump a tree or you rub it up against a telegraph pole or something when you're parking it, they give it quite a lot of strength that way. The twist strength is dealt with really well by, by our brackets, our hook and our other one. So all in all, this is probably the stiffest and strongest solution for these campers without loading up the walls and, and risking damage to the sides of the vehicle. Um, now the Oztrak Tanami has an interesting feature that a lot of you are gonna love as well. I don't know if they all have it, but there's actually a bolt track fitted here. Um, now this fits in quite well uh, and quite easy. It's just fixed to the top of the, the van with tech screws. So very simple install. Uh, and you can slide a, um, a little uh, rain cover in there, the whole length of that, and actually stops water coming down between the awning and the wall. It will actually send it back into the gutter here and out the ends of the trailer here and at the other end or whichever end is down. So yeah, good solution for um, preventing any water coming down the walls of the van. And very simple, really. Um, I don't know if you can see it well. We'll come up really close. There's the bolt track there. I'll go and get the, um, the little awning flap for you. Go on and got it. Here it is. It's, um, yeah, it's just, see the bolt rope in the end? It's a little flap and that would slide. Um, slide back into the track here and then sit up inside obviously upside down um, anyway um, another quick look but bushwhacker nice big awning nice big awning pull or one thing we didn't like about this awning it's gonna pull here there's no doubt about that because it doesn't have pitch poles not something that we're aware of but no pitch poles in this awning um, now super peg Australia uh, makes a pole that you would definitely want to run with this awning and it basically clips in here and it has a curve in it to push the roof up and, and allow the water to um, to thus run off that front edge. Um, you would definitely need to deploy or put that pole up in rain conditions for this awning. And I guess this awning being 22 or 23 square metres, pulling on this thing is going to be inevitable without some support through the middle of that because it's quite a big span. Um, definitely needs that. They, they have provided a little tab here um, which would allow you to pull that down and stop pulling that way with a guy rope and a pole but you know 
I mean, this is poleless, so let's say let's uh, let's do a bit better than that and get a pole. Okay, a single, you know, roof pitch pole. Hope you like the video, and I hope it's helpful for all of you with um, hybrid campers that got rubbish awnings. Um, this might be presently one of the better solutions out there. Uh, if this particular awning or a 360 awning is floating your boat, um, I'm just going to do a quick uh, demonstration of how to put it up, uh, single-handed, give you guys a, um, a look at how long it takes in real time. Cheers, and thanks for watching. After you've unzipped the bag, um, you've got four uh, large Velcro straps, which you have to fish up in, in the top and undo, which I'm doing now. Um, they release the arms, um, and then you can basically go and roll out uh, your awning. Now, 360 awnings roll out one end at a time. So once you've walked the front out and hooked it off, it's why the, the hook bracket that we make is so important as well. It just keeps everything very stable during the setup process. Um, you will need a step, I've, I'm just using a chair, but a step ladder or something which you can move from one end to the other is really handy. Um, we had to customise these hooks to go around the pole and the arm. You'll know when you see the hooks that they're quite a lot higher and bigger than our usual ones that we make. Um, but yeah, there's the strength that you get from it. It's quite a game changer with this, this sort of stuff, not needing poles until quite a bit of wind. Once you've got one side up and stable, um, move to the other side. Um, and, and basically then deploy that the same way. Interesting enough, when you pack the awning, you have to pack the rear arm, if you do the front first, in the same order but reversed as how you set it up. Um, and the arm needs to go underneath the canvas when you're packing it. Anyway, um, the tension is achieved here by the accuracy of the hook brackets and their, their spacing. They are slotted so that when you install them, you can mine and you adjust them uh, to make sure you've got the right tension in there once you're finishing your install. So hopefully that's it in a nutshell. That is the setup of a Meg awning by Bushwhacker. Um, as I say, this is a 13 foot um, Austrac uh, hybrid camper, which has a backplate length of 3.95 meters on the camper. Um, and we've used a, um, a 3.8 meter meg to achieve this install, which worked in really well. Thanks for watching.